typical scenes of the vast crowd arriving at Wembley open the story of the cup final. Here are some of the 100,000 or so who packed the famous stadium, and Newcastle supporters were soon singing their own signature tune. But Manchester City fans had a counter for that. Meanwhile, a glimpse at United's dressing room. No sign of nerves here. Her Majesty the Queen had come with the Duke and Princess Margaret to watch the big match. And there was an ovation for them, of course. Then out came the teams, City wearing tracksuits. Now the Duke steps onto the field of battle and first Paul presents the Manchester City players. When it was Newcastle United's turn, Skula did the honours. Then Paul and Skula shake, Mr Leith blows the whistle, and Don Revy kicks off, intending no doubt to put his plan into action right away. Newcastle, in fact, put in a very rapid counter-thrust, and City were forced to concede a corner. Len White took the kick, a beauty, and Jack Milburn headed through. Yes, Newcastle were one up with a goal in less than a minute. That was sensation number one. They were still forcing the pace when after some 20 minutes play, Jimmy Meadows, City's right back, was injured. It seemed that he'd twisted a muscle and was obviously in severe pain. He had to be helped off the field, a tragedy for Manchester, who had to play with only 10 men for the rest of the match. Bert Troutman, once a German prisoner of war in Britain, had a vitally important job defending the city's goal. He rose to the occasion magnificently. There's a ball in there somewhere. Towards the end of the first half, Manchester seemed almost inspired by their handicap and reached their real form with a series of attacking movements. was from one of these raids that a high centre from Hayes was headed in by Bobby Johnston for the equaliser. So it was one all at half time and the stage was set for a thrilling if anxious second period. It turned out that the anxious moments were only for Manchester supporters because Newcastle was soon right on top. In less than 10 minutes, Bobby Mitchell took a very nice pass and beat Troutman from a sharp angle. So United were in the lead again, and all the time they looked like going further ahead. Mitchell played a big part in Newcastle's third goal, driving down the wing and making a perfect opening. George Hanna did the rest. The unlucky Meadows was watching his team go down. No doubt that third goal seemed as painfully inevitable to him as slow motion makes it appear. In the closing stages, City made a desperate rally. It was quite a change to see United's goal threatened. And it was keeper Ronnie Simpson who now had his work cut out. Very well he did it too. And there'd be no more scoring when the final whistle blew. Congratulation and condolence followed. It was a great win, but Manchester certainly had the bad luck. The moment of triumph came when Her Majesty presented the cup to Jimmy Schooler. Newcastle's captain had played a great and tireless game, leading his men to a well-deserved victory. United have now won the Cup six times, equaling the record. This was Jimmy's comment. And I'm very sorry that Jimmy Meadows had to leave the field. He'll also miss the English tour, which is very, very, very hard luck for a good boy. But I'm sure that everyone who's seen this game will think that the Johnnies have at last deserved to win this. The end of the story is told in these exclusive pictures in the dressing room. For a cup like that, at a moment like this, nothing but the best. Champagne! There was evidently plenty to spare. My word, does victory taste good!